Now, a 27 First News special presentation, Remembering Bishop Murray. Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Columba Cathedral and our special coverage, Remembering Bishop George Murray. In just about 30 minutes, we are going to be starting the Mass of Christian Burial here at St. Columbus in Youngstown. So that's going to be happening in about 30 minutes. You can see behind us there is already some activity here at St. Columba. The service itself starting right around 1 o'clock, and that's going to start with a procession into the church. But uh, we're going to be getting a little bit more into what you'll be seeing and hearing in just a moment. It's been one week since the bishop passed away. We keep hearing stories about his impact on people and also some of the things he accomplished in his life. Bishop George Murray spent 13 years total as the bishop of the Diocese of Youngstown. First News senior reporter Jerry Ricciuti is sharing some of the work he's done here over the years in his own words. We first met George Murray in January 2007 when he celebrated his very first Mass in Youngstown on the same day he introduced himself to local religious leaders and reporters. I am honored to be named the fifth bishop of Youngstown. George Murray was born in 1948 in New Jersey and ordained into the Society of Jesuits 41 years ago. He was 58 when he was installed as bishop for the six-county Youngstown Diocese in March of 07, succeeding Bishop Thomas Tobin. Help me to be a faithful teacher, a wise administrator, and a holy priest. During his tenure, he would tell us some of his favorite moments were visiting parochial schools in the diocese and meeting with students. But there were also times of sadness and grief. In 2010, after a parishioner was killed in the parking lot of a church on Youngstown's south side, the bishop went there to serve Mass. I think it's important that we stand together in difficult times, so I wanted to come and pray with these people. In 2015, he was appointed by then Governor John Kasich to a statewide task force concerning interactions between police and the communities they serve, even then calling for what many are still demanding today. We can always do and benefit from more training. After recovering from two bouts with leukemia at the Cleveland Clinic, Murray took on the issue of clergy sex abuse, even urging his colleagues with the U.S. Conference of Bishops to forcibly remove those who worked to cover up the scandal. We need to look at this as a societal problem, and in the church, we need to report this to the appropriate authorities. In April of this year, the bishop was diagnosed with his third bout of cancer, only this time he sought outpatient treatment at St. E's in Youngstown. Early last week, he was admitted to the Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York City, where he died last Friday at the age of 71. Jerry Ricciuti, WKBN 27 First News. Later, we'll take a look back at Bishop Murray's installation here in Youngstown. First, we do want to introduce you to Father Lavelle from Our Lady of Mount Carmel, Niles. About, you're the expert here. Talk to us about what we're going to be seeing, what we're going to be hearing today for those just now joining us. Well, we'll celebrate the Mass of Christian Burial for Bishop Murray, much like we would any of the lay faithful in our parish churches. Uh, Bishop Murray was very instrumental in the planning of the funeral. Uh, knowing that his health was not good, uh, he took it upon himself to start to make plans, the readings, the songs, even those who are participating in the Mass. Mm -hmm. Now, it is m mostly tradition that the Metropolitan Archbishop would preside over the funeral Mass for a bishop of one of the other dioceses. So uh, the celebrant today will be Archbishop Dennis Schnur of Cincinnati. Uh, and then it was to Bishop Murray to choose other priests to be in the sanctuary. Uh, with the COVID crisis, we've had to be a little fluid right. about uh, what 
visiting priests and what other bishops or cardinals might be able to attend. Uh, but the other uh, most notable choice of Bishop Murray was who would give the homily? Mm -hmm. Who would allow the gospel of Christ to reflect on the life of George Murray? And he chose his closest collaborator here in our diocese, Monsignor Robert Sifrin, our vicar general and moderator of the Curia, who is now our diocesan administrator. And you say there's a way that those are normally handled, at least how you handle them. How do you think it'll be handled today? I think it will be handled uh, with uh, a great sense of joy quite frankly, joy in the reflection of Bishop Murray's life. The way a homily should be crafted, and I'm sure that this will be part of Monsignor's plan, is first, of course, to reflect on the life of the person, uh, their gifts, their blessings, how they embraced God's gifts to them, but then to reflect on that life and to be a challenge to those of us who are still here, uh, not to replicate Bishop Murray's life, but then, like him, to discover our blessings, our gifts, our talents, and then to go out like him and put them into practice. And going off of that, we do want to explain to you the role Bishop Murray had in his time here. Uh, a Catholic bishop must be appointed by the Pope. That's something we know. The Pope is the Bishop of Rome and he oversees the entire Catholic Church around the world. Each of the 195 dioceses in the United States has a bishop. The Catholic Diocese of Youngstown covers six counties. Now that includes Columbiana, Mahoning, Trumbull, Ashtabula, Portage, and Stark. In 2018, the diocese estimated there were more than 162,000 Catholics in those counties. So that's the people Bishop Murray oversaw. We know bishops are tasked with governing their diocese and making decisions, teaching, along with sanctifying. That means things like ordaining priests and deacons and confirming Catholics. And some of those will be here. You say maybe his best friend in the bishop uh, is from Arizona and might not be here. Yes, I know he was very well liked in the whole bishops' conference, but he counted among his closest friends Bishop Cacanus of Arizona and Archbishop Wilton Gregory of Washington, D.C. Uh, again, no list has been printed for fear that certain bishops and other priests would not be able to be here. Uh, Bishop uh, missed his 41st anniversary as a priest by just a few days. It was by providence that he was ordained on the Feast of St. Columba. Even though he was ordained for the Maryland province of the Jesuits, uh, years later he would come to be installed in the Cathedral of St. Columba. And he served as a bishop for over 25 years as the Auxiliary of Chicago, uh, St. Thomas in the Virgin Islands, and then, as you've mentioned, 13 years here in Youngstown. So in that time, he has garnered many friendships. Uh, we know that people, bishops, priests, uh, religious and lay faithful from all of those aspects of his life would like to be here, again, with limited space, with social distancing, and the health and well-being of others. We're just not certain, even at this time, how many will be able to be here. You talked about the friendships he fostered. Can you expand on what your friendship was like with him? Any special memories you have? Well, I... When he arrived, as I've mentioned, I was the director of our TV studio, so was part of his installation. I then worked for him in Catholic Charities and on the Bishop's Appeal, and was a pastor for these entire 13 years he was mm -hmm. here. Uh, so I really did get to know him in different facets. Um, he was very concerned about the poor and the sick and those in need in our communities. He was very interested in the future well-being of our uh, diocesan church. One of his last tasks, we've spent a few years working on how to deal with the shortage of priests but still maintain our parishes. Uh, but on a personal level, he was very quick wit, uh, very um, humorous and jovial, had a, a Gregorious laugh, and really was genuinely interested in people. I know you said, We'll see some footage of his installation. I saw some on your news coverage this morning, and I remember back to that first day, him greeting people in that receiving line. That had to have been a long day for him, but he smiled and laughed and joked with every single person who came through. We talked about uh, behind us, as you what well, the pallbearers just left. There's a bunch of high school kids. Uh, Mayor Tito Brown said something about the passing of Bishop Murray this week. He crossed a lot of different denominations and a lot of different type of people. He reached a lot. Absolutely. He was very interested in uh, ecumenism, not in, in the sense of converting people to the Catholic faith, but allowing them to see that those of us who are part of the Catholic faith desire to reach out to others. Uh, it's very much the, the gospel call. 
and and he saw that as the need. One of the things that's very unique in the Catholic Church is whether you're the pastor of a parish or the bishop of a diocese, law, the church law tells us that we have responsibility for the care of all the souls, not just the baptized Catholics, but every single person living in that territory or that boundary. Bishop Murray took very much to heart the call that once he was installed here, he had a care and concern for every soul in our six counties. And he really embraced that from the youngest to the oldest of our people. Father Laval, thank you. We'll get more with you in just a minute. But first, Bishop Murray was the fifth bishop in the 77-year history of the Youngstown Diocese. The diocese dates back to 1943 when it was formed out of the Cleveland Diocese by Pope Pius XII. The first bishop of Youngstown was the most reverend James McFadden. He was previously auxiliary bishop in Cleveland. The old St. Columba Church became Youngstown's cathedral. Bishop McFadden spent nine years on the job before passing away in 1952. That's when Bishop Emmett Walsh took over. Two years into his time as the leader of the diocese, St. Columba Cathedral was destroyed by fire. Bishop Walsh had the task of having a new cathedral built. It was dedicated in 1958. Bishop Walsh held the position until his death in 1968. After his passing, his auxiliary bishop, James Malone, was picked by Pope Paul VI to take over the Youngstown Diocese. Bishop Malone spent more years than anyone else heading up the diocese. He was the only bishop who was a Youngstown native. He retired in December of 1995. Five years later, Bishop Malone passed away. The next leader came from the Diocese of Pittsburgh. In February of 1996, the most reverend Thomas Tobin was installed as bishop. He served until 2005, when he was named the head of the Diocese of Providence, Rhode Island. His replacement came to Youngstown from the Virgin Islands. Bishop George Murray was the leader of that diocese before taking over here in 2007. Two people we didn't mention were two auxiliary bishops of Youngstown, William Hughes and Benedict Frenzetta. Now we know the process to appoint a new uh, leader here is going to take some time. So questionnaires going to be sent out to across the country, really, and then eventually Pope Francis is going to appoint someone to that post. But that likely won't happen for about a year to 18 months. And until that happens, the diocese has selected an administrator. Monsignor Robert Sifrin will help lead things until a new bishop is, is named. Now he has served as the Vicar General under Bishop Murray and is administrator at St. Edward's Parish on Youngstown's north side. That means he did a lot of tasks for the bishop and worked closely with him for the past 13 years. So Monsignor Sifrin will give the homily today, like Father Laval mentioned. All right, as we look behind us now at St. Columba Cathedral, you see the, the hearse outside, but uh, really everybody who's gotten here so far has gone inside to get their seat for the funeral, which begins at 1 o'clock. It is by invitation only. That's, that is correct. So um, Bishop Murray's influence really extended beyond the Catholic Church. So we want to give you some thoughts from leaders about the late bishop's impact on the valley. Bishop Murray led the Youngstown Catholic Diocese since 2007. Uh, was the first African American, first minority bishop to hold that post. Our prayers are certainly uh, with all those in the diocese who loved him. He was a calming voice. I mean, there was something about him when he came in the room. There was a presence. Um, when he talked to him, he seemed to be able to touch, connect with whoever he's talking to. And, and he just gave you a sense of wisdom and, and knowledge when he was in the room. What we're dealing with in this community, you know, a pandemic and then the protest, um, Bishop Murray would be the one you would probably need to have at the table to help um, kind of calm the waters, to heal, heal the land. So uh, it will be a, a big hole to fill, but we just continue to pray that uh, for him and his family, Lynette and I pray for him and his family during this time. He took a, and immersed himself in the community, trying to improve, enhance uh, various institutions and places in our community, uh, always having a passion and a commitment to the people. It was, people were never secondary, they were primary. And so whenever he did and however he acted, he always affirmed the humanity of individuals. By making sure that a lot of even until the day before he went to New York, he appointed two new pastors. So he was very concerned for the pastoral care of the people.
today's funeral mass is by invitation only inside St. Columba Cathedral. Last night, the public had a chance to pay their respects to Bishop George Murray. Now, there were quite a few people there. There were people who'd heard his teachings, people who had seen him on vacation, and people who were believers from other denominations. First News reporter Lindsay Watson shares their stories. He was a good guy. Um, I think he did a lot of good here. And just a sweet guy. Just, I think he was just a sweetheart. So I wanted to be here and see him. We just wanted to come and pay our respects and let him know again how much we love him. He's going to be sadly missed. Since coming to Youngstown in 2007, Bishop George Murray was known to spread love and light throughout the community. As many people came to St. Columba Cathedral to pay their final respects, they shared their favorite moments and memories. Yeah, he always said hi to you and how you doing and, you know, always welcomed you with open arms. This couple from Poland actually had a chance meeting with the bishop at St. Thomas in the Virgin Islands while on vacation. Two years before, he would come to Youngstown. We attended mass in a carport that was bedecked with beautiful flowers, uh, tropical flowers, and the priest arrives in a boat. It was Bishop Murray and a memory that these two won't soon forget. They say he never did either. But he was always receptive and seemed to remember us every time we met, which was very special of him. And, always a special spot. And I appreciate we were able to pay our respects. A friend to anyone who crossed his path. Bill Howe, master of the Knights of Columbus, fourth degree, said so many things made Bishop Murray special. He was also a fellow knight. His personality, his uh, love of the church, his uh, dedication to the church, and his, his willingness to be uh, a friend. Guy Sebastian reflected on a time that the bishop spoke to a group of men at Ohio Valley Teen Challenge. The interaction moved him and many others, both spiritually and emotionally. He was the kind of teacher that would welcome any type of question, whether you were a believer or not in a higher power. So uh, he, was a, he was an excellent teacher. During the prayer service, songs of praise could be heard in and outside of St. Columba. Lifting Bishop Murray's legacy and the love he had for so many. A love which they shared right back. He was always smiling. Always. Every picture I saw, he was smiling and happy. So it was a big inspiration for me. Lindsay Watson, WKBN 27 First News. It really seems like the common denominator we're seeing here is how approachable and cheerful Bishop Murray was as a person. And Father Laval is telling us he has a quick wit. One thing we don't know is he battled leukemia. Not once, twice, that third time too. Take us through what he was going through and how that was going. Well, as it's been said in these past few days, he really in each of those bouts placed his trust and reliance on God. Uh, however, as in anyone's illness, with the second and then the third uh, bout, you know, it just takes a little bit more of your energy and a little bit more of your resources. But he, he never doubted in that God would provide for him. And, and for the, the Christian faithful, the ultimate promise is the hope of resurrection, to live in the kingdom. Uh, certainly all of us, including Bishop Murray, would hope for healing in this life. Uh, feel they have work yet to accomplish, but he really did place his trust in God. And we are a, a people of the Easter sacraments, and we believe in the Easter resurrection, and that was very much in the front of his mind in these final days. And I believe his motto was, Christ my light, correct me if I'm wrong. Can you touch on that and, and how that showed in his life? Absolutely. When he was called by uh, our late Holy Father, Pope St. John Paul II, to become a bishop in uh, 1995, uh, every bishop is invited to choose a motto and a coat of arms. Uh, now, when they move to another diocese, they have the option of changing that. His remain constant, whether the Auxiliary of Chicago, the Virgin Islands, or here in Youngstown. Uh, Christ my light. He really saw the light of Christ, of what illuminates our paths. It illuminates our minds, our hearts, our souls, our our activities. He was a very uh, gifted intellectual. He was very interested in history, but he was a very social and um, service minded person. And he allowed that light of Christ to influence every aspect of his ministry. 
One of the readings is Psalm 27 today. Everybody knows Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. Psalm 27 basically says, God is great, he protects us. Whom shall I fear? Why do you think he chose that? One of the things that Bishop Murray often would say, and it's very much part of the African-American tradition uh, and part of the African-American church, um, is God is good all the time, all the time God is good. And so he really believed in the goodness and the greatness of God. And if you focused on that goodness, you have nothing to fear. And I really believe that uh, in his final days and final moments, he relied on the goodness of God and, and had absolutely no fear that he would see his God face to face. Well, thank you so much, Father Lavelle. We know you have to get into the massive Christian burial uh, service. We will let you get to that, but we appreciate you, your insight today. Thank you. Now, we also want to share, you know, 13 years ago, Bishop Murray was installed right behind us here at the cathedral as the fifth bishop of Youngstown. And here is a report from that day, March 27, 2007, from former 27 First News reporter Tricia Perry. The procession of community leaders, clergy, and dignitaries took 30 minutes to file into place in the Grand St. Columba Cathedral. At the very end of the line, Bishop Murray stopped at the door, where he accepted the crucifix from the Archbishop of Cincinnati and blessed himself and those near him, taking a moment to let his friendly personality show. Once inside the church, Bishop Murray took his seat. His predecessor, Bishop Thomas Tobin, at his left. A letter of appointment was read by the Pope's representative is to be a promoter of unity, of unity with God, and of unity among the faithful. The letter was shown to the consultors of the diocese and accepted. With faith in our Lord Jesus Christ and with the love of God in my heart, I do accept the pastoral care of the people of God in the Diocese of Youngstown. Now wearing the mitre and ready to be seated in the chair or cathedra, Bishop Murray accepted the staff and the applause of the crowd and started to pray. Help me, your chosen servant, as pastor for Christ, to watch over your flock. Help me to be a faithful teacher, a wise administrator, and a holy priest. With that prayer, Bishop Murray ended the installation ceremony and began the Mass, the first of his career in Youngstown. Trisha Perry, 27 First News. Because of COVID-19 and social distancing, we won't see nearly the number of people today that were here for Bishop Murray's installation. The diocese tells us there may be about roughly a dozen visiting bishops today. They'll gather at the back of the cathedral and process in. Seated to their left will be priests from the diocese. On their right will be Bishop Murray's family and invited guests. That's something you will be seeing. We'll be right back with more of Remembering Bishop George Murray.
Since First News first reported on Bishop George Murray's passing one week ago today, we've really seen an outpouring of love and support from the community. Yeah, this week we spoke to a woman who knew Bishop Murray from 50 years ago, and she shared her story with us in First News reporter Keely Lovern. It only takes one person. And, and George was the person that changed my life. Deborah Spencer met George Murray when she was 16. He was just 21 and working as a seminarian in Bloomfield, Connecticut. I know that he believed that um, Christ was his light. Well, he was our light. You know, he, George was our light. She calls him her teacher, mentor, and friend. Now in her 60s and living in Massachusetts, Spencer says she's never forgotten about George, even when their paths separated more than a decade ago. He just passionately embraced Christ's path, and, and through his example, we all had a deeper understanding of his love. He, he taught us how to have love for one another. Spencer credits Bishop George Murray with making her who she is as a person, both in and out of faith. When you were around George, you knew that you were safe, that you were in God's light, that you were safe, and that he was there for you. The two kept in touch throughout the years, and Spencer was always amazed with his charisma, kindness, and ability to heal even from a distance. That's what made George special. That's what made him unforgettable. So when she learned of his death, Spencer says she was devastated. I went to that statue, and I got on my knees and I prayed to her for him. I believe that he prayed for all of us, and so when I say I prayed for him, it was just a part of what I did. <laughs> George is the angel on all of our shoulders now, and I believe that he knows that and that he continues to serve us. We all want to continue to be a part of his flock and embrace his word in Christ's light, in Christ's light. As George, we want to continue with his legacy. For WKBN 27 First News, I'm Keely Lovern. We are now less than a minute away from the massive Christian burial here, and we're seeing some more activity outside St. Columbus. Outside behind us, you can see the bishops and others lining up. They will be processing in. Uh, they will take their seats, and then the service will begin. I expect them to talk today about Bishop Murray's passion, mm -hmm. his education, also his vision for the Diocese of Youngstown and, and what he was able to accomplish in the years that he was here. He was a beloved man throughout this community, his family as well. So this service really going to reflect that today at, in this funeral mass. Mayor Tito Brown saying earlier this week, the Mahoning Valley will miss his echoing words of wisdom and his reassuring smile. Remember, you can stay right here on WKBN or online for this service. Who is being buried today at St. Columbus Cathedral, the central church of the Diocese of Youngstown? I'm Sister Joyce Campbell, Director of the Office of Religious for the Diocese of Youngstown. And on behalf of CTNY, Catholic Television Network of Youngstown, and this entire diocesan church, we welcome you for this solemn and sacred occasion. Upon his appointment as the fifth bishop of Youngstown in 2007, Bishop Murray said how honored he was to accept the Holy Father's call to serve the people of this local diocesan church. And in his first sermon in this very cathedral, he spoke of his firm conviction that we need to remain in God's love by holding on to Jesus and walking with him. Christ, my light, was his motto. By the use of this phrase, he expressed that for the Christian to find his way, one needs a light to follow, or a light to find the path on which to go. In either case, that light is Christ, to show the way and to be the goal at the very end of the journey. As we gather today in this cathedral church, the Bishop's Church, we are mindful of our communion as God's people united in our common grief as we celebrate Bishop Mary's new life in the eternal 
light of Christ. Presider for today's funeral mass is Most Reverend Dennis Schnur, Archbishop of Cincinnati and Metropolitan in, this, in the province of the state of Ohio. Homilist for today's mass is Monsignor Robert Sifrin, diocesan administrator. Deacons for today's liturgy is transitional deacon Ryan Furlong, who will be ordained to the priesthood this August, and permanent deacon Michael Kojancic from St. Charles Church in Boardman. Other ministers at the altar include friends of Bishop Mary and bishops from the state of Ohio. Music for today's Mass is provided by Dr. Daniel Leguina, Cathedral Organist and Choir Master. Cantor for today's Mass is Barb Zorn. Gallery singers and instrumentalists are from parishes around the diocese. Due to the present coronavirus, the presence of the faithful was limited to clergy, family, and personal friends. We welcome those of you who are with us in spirit through the live stream on our diocesan website, doy.org, or watching us on ETC Ecumenical Television Channel through the services of CTNY. We invite you to join us in this solemn celebration as the congregation sings, Christ be our light. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. This afternoon we gather to thank God for the life and ministry of Bishop Murray. We also pray to God that he may show Bishop Murray that peace that we can only know when we see God face to face. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that the soul of your departed servant, Bishop George, to whom you committed the care of your family, may, with the manifest fruit of his labors, enter into the eternal gladness of his Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. We now enter into the Liturgy of the Word. Our first reading from the Book of Wisdom will be, will be read by Sister Toby Lardy, Major Superior of the Humility of Mary Sisters from Villa Maria, Pennsylvania. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God. 
and no torment shall touch them. They seemed, in the view of the foolish, to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace. For if before men indeed they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings he took them to himself. In the time of their visitation they shall shine, and shall dart about as sparks through stubble. They shall judge nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful will abide with him forever. Because grace and mercy are with his Holy One, and his care is with his elect. The Word of the Lord. Cantor for Responsorial Psalm 27 is Barb Zorn.
Our second reading from St. Paul's letter to the Romans will be read by Sister Mary McCormick, Major Superior of the Ursuline Sisters of Youngstown. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all. Will he not give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. What will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril, or the sword? No, in all these things, we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> the Gospel from St. Luke will be proclaimed by Deacon Ryan Furlong, and the homily will then be given by Monsignor Sifrin.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus. And they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of these things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people. How our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther, but they urged him, Stay with us. For it is nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. But he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us? while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us. So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. The journey of the two disciples on the way to Emmaus is a familiar account that often touches the hearts of believers 
in many important times in their lives. It encourages a comfort in sorrow and invites a recapturing of the joy and hope in the risen Christ. The two disciples and Jesus, in their intimate conversation along the way, heard Jesus explain the promises that God had made. Then, in the breaking of the bread, the promise was made manifest, made present. The promise made present gives a transformative joy that prompts their return to Jerusalem in the very spirit of the Lord, there to celebrate with the church that the Lord is risen. The transformation that occurred on the way to Emmaus is appropriate for us in the present sorrow and loss that we have felt these last few days. So many people around us know what has happened these days, and they join us in our sorrow. How might the voice of the Lord speak to us today, who are on this road to Emmaus, sorrowful, disappointed, unclear of the days ahead? May we, too, enter into an intimate conversation with our Lord. How might we do that? I would suggest that we listen to the voice of the Lord that has been echoed in the life and ministry of Bishop Murray. In his earlier life, Bishop Murray was marked by the importance of faith, family, and friends. They became a solid core of strength that began a life-giving foundation upon which to build. That core of strength included his family life, his friends, his Catholic school formation, choosing to become a Catholic while in grade school, and eventually entering the Society of Jesus. The voice of the Lord was drawing him to a vocation in the service of priesthood. For all of you who knew him, I invite you to consider how has the voice of Christ echoed in Bishop Murray's life and his ministry, and how has it spoken to you? Those of you who have seen or studied under him as a teacher would have experienced a love of learning and inquiry, a search for truth, and a commitment of charity and justice. I suspect he could be a rather demanding teacher who expected virtue and integrity of life in those he taught. This love of Catholic education continued throughout his adult life, manifest in the Catholic institutions that he served and how he promotes Catholic education even until now. His stories of support of Catholic education are endless. Let's also consider the Episcopal ministry that we have experienced. He lived his Episcopal motto, Christ my light, and he wanted nothing more than for this to become the motto and desire of all the people he served. His ministry as pastor and teacher, administrator and servant has echoed the voice of Christ calling all who were touched by him to turn toward and see the light of Christ. As bishop, he always cherished the opportunities to be with young people, whether at our Catholic schools, in youth ministry or confirmation, he genuinely enjoyed their company. That infectious smile and laugh that so many of us knew so well, a smile that could light up the room, was particularly joy-filled when he was with young people. He loved them, and they knew it. They also loved him with an affection which always buoyed him up. Any visit he made, he told stories the rest of the day to everyone he met about what they said, what they did, how they were learning, and how their Catholic faith meant so much to them. In his Episcopal ministry, Bishop Murray always strove to make time for his priests. He enjoyed being with us. He was part of us. He also enjoyed all of those who served in ministry in the Church, because we were working with him to bring the light of Christ, the Gospel, into the world in which we live. In knowing him well, we can all say that he was compassionate almost to a fault. Now, his administrative and pastoral side, he always liked to see the results in ministry 
whether celebrating the sacraments well or bringing good order to the church, both here and on the national level, he always wanted meetings to be productive and effective. He made sure they were, no exceptions. I'm sure that many of the bishops here could still tell stories of his work in the committees at the USCCB. Bishop Murray was always convinced that the fruits of teaching, sanctifying, and good order had to be justice and charity. How was the light of Christ to shine on if there was not visible commitments to peace and justice among the people of God? His service on the national level was sometimes a sacrifice for us here in the diocese, but it was always an enrichment. He broadened our horizons and enriched us with his experience. Some of those areas that included the National Catholic Education Association, CRS, and the many committees at the Bishops' Conference. And on the international level, he found great pride in participating in the Synod of the Family in Rome. The last two years, despite his suffering, he always was determined to, to live out his ministry, his love of Christ, his love of the people. After his first series of treatments and remission, he was back into the routine of ministry both locally and nationally. He was particularly pleased to serve on the Committee on Racism. He wanted the Catholic Church here in America to assist in the transformation and renewal of society, of ridding us of this deadly scourge. When his re leukemia recurred, he painfully realized that the work of the committee needed the momentum of new leadership, and he was most grateful that his brother bishops did not flag in their work, but continued to bring this task to hand. Unfortunately, as we see today, this task has become even more pressing and the effect of this scourge of racism more painful. The second recurrence of leukemia remission was harder and longer. While he returned to ministry, he had to limit his contact with people because of his susceptibility. This was a genuine sacrifice on his part to all of us who knew him because he was so committed to interacting with people, enjoying their company. He maintained his involvement in ministry, facing the challenges of distancing, but with the firm faith that we heard in St. Paul to the Romans, what can separate us from the love of Christ? He still found ways of making the light of Christ visible in his life and ours. As a result of his susceptibility to infection, he had already practiced social distancing before leukemia returned a third time in this March, but at the same time, the pandemic heightened it all the more. In these last few months, the social distancing and physical separation caused by the safety guidelines around our country made our efforts to support and encourage him more difficult, yet everyone took the opportunity to do so. In many ways, Bishop Murray and all his family and friends and colleagues experienced with him the pains and sorrows of separation. The assurance of St. Paul that nothing can separate us from the love of Christ was a challenging but a promising truth that we desperately needed. There are a few things that some might call a coincidence that I think God had a purpose. This past Tuesday, June the 9th, was the feast of St. Columba in the Diocese of Youngstown. 41 years ago on Tuesday, Bishop Murray was ordained to the priesthood. It seemed that God knew what he was doing to send him to us. Our Catholic newspaper often recounts many of the things I've shared with you and much more. And in his regular column, he entitled it, On the Road to Jerusalem. I think a fortuitous connection for us today. The promise of the Lord has so often been explained to us by the life and ministry of Bishop Murray, just as the disciples on the road to Emmaus were taught 
and learned and explained the promises of God, lightening their heart, lifting their spirits. As they approached the breaking of the bread, the promise was made manifest. As we approach the breaking of the bread, may the promise be made manifest to us. May we be transformed by the light of Christ with the joy and hope in the risen Christ. May we continue the journey to Jerusalem to be together with the Church and proclaim the gospel which Bishop Murray so greatly loved. Presenting the General Intercessions is Deacon Furlong. God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ his Son from the dead. With confidence, let us ask him to save all his people, living and deceased. For George, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brother, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brother George, who served the church as a priest, that he may be given a place in the liturgy of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for the family and friends of our brother George, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brother. Grant him your mercy. Grant him also the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We now enter into the liturgy of the Eucharist bringing up the gifts of bread and wine, which will become for us the most holy body and blood of Christ, is Pauli Butch, longtime secretary for Bishop Mary, and her husband, Gary. We invite you to join us in this solemn prayer of the church as the hymn, Life is Changed, Not Ended, is sung.
his chosen ones. See what love our God has shown us. God is our light. God is our joy. Life is changed, not and brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, the We humbly beseech your boundless mercy, Lord, that this sacrifice which your departed servant and Bishop George, while in the body offered to your majesty for the salvation of the faithful, may bring him to your pardon, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For it is at your summons that we come to birth. By your will we are governed, and at your command that we return on, on account of sin to the earth from which we came. And when you give the sign, we who have been redeemed by the death of your Son shall be raised up to the glory of his resurrection. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim.
are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. As we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your Church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint Columba, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Bishop George, whom you have called from this world to yourself Grant that he who was united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To all our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing, from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. 
There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you are God as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the earth, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to one another a sign of peace. All right. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Bishop Mary was born in Camden, New Jersey in 1948. After graduating from Catholic elementary and high schools, he attended St. Joseph's College in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, St. Thomas Seminary in Bloomfield, Connecticut, and St. Mary's Seminary in Baltimore, Maryland, where he received a bachelor's degree in philosophy in 1972. That same year, he entered the Society of Jesus. He was ordained for the Maryland province of the Society of Jesus on June 9, 1979. He earned a Master of Divinity degree from the Jesuit School of Theology in Berkeley in 1979 and a doctorate in American cultural history from George Washington University in Washington, D.C. in 1994. Bishop Murray served on the faculty and was Dean of Student Activities at Gonzala College High School, Washington, D.C. from 1974 to 1976. He was Assistant Professor of American Studies at Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. from 1986 to 1990 and President of Archbishop Carroll High School in Washington, D.C. from 1989 to 1994. He was named Associate Vice President for Academic Affairs at the University of Detroit Mercy in 1994. On January 24, 1995, Pope John Paul II appointed him titular bishop of Fuerteventura and auxiliary bishop of Chicago, where he was ordained to the episcopacy on March 20, 1995. On May 5, 1998, Pope John Paul II appointed him coadjutor of St. Thomas in the Virgin Islands. Bishop Mary succeeded to the see on June 30, 1999. On March 28, 2007, he was installed as the fifth bishop of the Diocese of Youngstown. Bishop Mary has served on numerous boards, including the University of Detroit and Loyola Academy, both in Detroit, Michigan, St. Joseph's University in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Mount St. Mary's College in Emmitsburg, Maryland, and the University of San Francisco in San Francisco, California. He served as Secretary of the United States Catholic Conference of Bishops and as Chair of the Committee Against Racism, Committee on Catholic Education, and Committee on Priorities and Plans. He has also been chair of the Board of Directors for the National Catholic Educational Association and a member of the Board of Directors of Catholic Relief Services. In 2015, Pope Francis appointed him a member of the Synod of Bishops to discuss family issues. As Bishop of Youngstown, in addition to guiding the diocese for the last 13 years, he implemented a pastoral plan for evangelization, trusting in Christ, a call to discipleship, calling for the regionalization and collaboration of parishes, schools, and resources to address the declining number of clergy and to ensure the continued vibrancy of the faith among the people of Northeast Ohio.
Let us pray. May your merciful kindness, which we implore, O Lord, benefit the soul of your departed servant, Bishop George, that by these sacrificial gifts he may he may know the eternal company of Christ in whom he hoped and whom he preached, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. I share with you that from far and near Words of consolation and prayers have come to us in Youngstown from the Holy Father through the Apostolic Nuncio. Having learned during our telephone conversation this morning the sad news of the death of the Most Reverend George V. Murray, Bishop of Youngstown, I extend to the lay faithful clergy and religious of the local church of Youngstown my prayers and sincere condolences the words of St. Paul expressing the mystery of death in Christ are a source of consolation. Are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in his resurrection. May Bishop Murray come to, the, to share in the fullness of the resurrection as the personal representative of the Holy Father to the Church in the United States, I express the spiritual closeness and paternal affection of His Holiness, Pope Francis, to all who mourn for Him. Eternal rest grant unto Him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon Him. May He rest in peace. Sincerely yours in Christ, Christophe Pierre, Apostolic Nuncio. Archbishop, we thank you and your brother bishops for joining us in this time of prayer, that it might transform our hearts and increase our faith. On behalf of the clergy, family and friends, we extend to Anthony and Laura our pledge of prayers for the weeks and months to come. Also our gratitude for sharing him with the church as a priest and a bishop, and our gratitude for having him here for 13 years. In the program today, you'll see all the broadcasts listed that you might share again in our prayer for Bishop Murray and for all who mourn his loss. Before the final commendation, I just want to say that I've known Bishop George for 25 years. When he was named the Auxiliary Bishop in Chicago, I was working at the Bishop's Conference on the national level. And uh, Bishop George's love for the church was evident very early on. He not only gave himself very generously to the assignments in Chicago and in St. Thomas and then here in Youngstown, but uh, he was, as Monsignor Sifrin indicated, he was very generous in giving his time and talent uh, to the church uh, on the national level. And I can assure you I've been in this uh, province, the province of, of Cincinnati, now for the last 12 years. And it was a privilege to be able to once again work so closely with, with uh, Bishop George. And uh, I know the bishops of this province would, would also echo that. He was. Uh, his, his insights and his enthusiasm for the work of the church was very contagious. And uh, because of that, he was able to do that uh, because he was sustained by the love and the affection of his friends and relatives. And so to the friends and relatives, I thank you for the way in which you, you uh, shared your friend, your relative, your brother uh, with the, the church so generously. I want to also thank the priests and the deacons of this, uh, of this diocese 
Uh, Bishop George was very proud of this uh, diocese. He saw the good things that were happening here, and he wanted that for the church, the church not only in this province, but also on the, on the national level. Uh, and as I said, he was it was always uh, very invigorating to be next to and around and to be talking to uh, Bishop George because of his great enthusiasm uh, and his determination uh, to do good things for the church and for the, the society in which we live. So to all of you, thank you very much for that. Before we go our separate lay ways, let us lay our brother and take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall, we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Into your hands, Father of mercy, we commend our brother Bishop George for the sure, in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Bishop George in this life, and which are, they are signs of your goodness and of your fellowship with the saints in heaven. Merciful Father, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant, and keep us who remain to, to comfort one another with assurance of faith until we all meet Christ, and, you are, and we are with you and our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us take our brother to his place of rest. May the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to, wor to welcome you. And may and take you into the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem.
I'm Sister Joyce Canditti, Director of the Office of Religious for the Diocese of Youngstown, thanking you on behalf of CTNY, Catholic Television Network of Youngstown, for praying with us during this solemn and sacred occasion of the funeral mass for Bishop George Vance Murray, SJ, the fifth bishop of the Diocese of Youngstown. Christ, my light, was his motto. May that same light of Christ guide us in our lives until our earthly journey is ended and we will be restless no more. right now giving you a look at what's happening outside St. Columbus Cathedral in Youngstown. The funeral mass for Bishop George Murray just ended. The processional is now proceeding outside where you can see bishops out here along with others wearing surgical masks as we wait for the casket. Bishop Murray called to serve the local diocese here in Youngstown and that he did today remembering Bishop Murray on his passing and giving him honor today. Listen to the voice of God, one of the first words in the homily. Listen to the voice of God. That Bishop Murray did. Many of you know he grew up in a Methodist family, actually converted to Catholicism, and they took him all the way here to Youngstown where he served so admirably as the bishop. We saw a lot of things unfold today in this funeral mass. I think one of the notes I took from that funeral mass was Monsignor Sifrin saying, the core of Bishop Murray's life was his faith, family, and friends. And we saw all of that today playing out in this service in his memory. And yeah, that was the first thing I wrote down, too. It spoke to his passion. Mm -hmm. As I talked to you, that was one of the things that I thought would be brought out, and it was his passion for uh, young Christians in the faith, his passion for uh, the helpless, the homeless, the people who couldn't take care of themselves. All those things covered in remembering Bishop Murray today. 
They also talked about him always searching for truth, his infectious smile, his infectious laugh that would just light up a room. Those are the memories so many people are taking away today as we watch his casket now uh, being taken down the steps here of St. Columbus Cathedral. Eventually today he will be buried at Calvary Cemetery in Youngstown where I believe three other bishops from the Diocese of Youngstown are also buried. And there's the picture from outside the church. All the pallbearers, I believe, are high school students. Uh, again, referring, as we talked about, to Bishop Murray's love for the young people. He'd love to talk at high schools. Talked at more than just Catholic high schools, too, Father Laval told us uh, that he just had a passion for reaching young people to get them more committed to wanting to know Christ and to serve Christ. We see that right now as they are loading Bishop Murray's casket into the hearse here at the hands of those high schoolers, the people whose lives he touched so much over his 13 years of serving as the fifth bishop of the Diocese of Youngstown. The education that he had in this area in terms of evangelization, he thought that was a priority to get more young people involved, to get them into the priesthood, to get them to serve their church, the Catholic Church. That was one of uh, Bishop Murray's priorities, and I think you're seeing some of that reflected here today. His Episcopal motto was, Christ my light, and we heard from Monsignor Sifrin about how Bishop Murray wanted this to be the motto for all of the people he served. Christ my light, to turn toward and see the light of Christ in every day moving forward. And then Bishop Murray's vision, his vision for the diocese, but you also heard mentioned a couple times during the ceremony, his vision on a national level. He wanted to speak to social issues. He wanted to speak to those things that he knew were affecting not just Catholics, but also those who were not in the faith, people who were just out on the street. He saw so many of them in Youngstown. He, they touched him. He wanted to help them. He wanted to minister to them. And that was the vision that he had, that it was more than just the four walls of the church, that it was the people in the church. He wanted them to get outside and reach more people. He was beloved in this community, and we're seeing that right now as we are seeing several people, probably half a dozen right now, coming and looking on as his casket was just loaded into the hearse. People from the community coming to watch and say their final farewells to Bishop George Murray. And you also heard uh, during the ceremony today that he was compassionate mm -hmm. to a fault. He was. That's a good thing to have. It was, and that laugh, the humor we've heard from Father Lavelle sharing those memories, those memories that he will be holding on to so tightly as he is laid to rest. Uh, many of you may be asking, what about the memorial contributions? Can mm -hmm. you make a memorial contribution? Yes, the Absolutely. diocese says, make it here to St. Columba Cathedral. That's how you should honor Bishop Murray. I know if you need the address for that, it is listed on WKBN.com, but they are welcoming those contributions. All right. Dave Suss, along with Chelsea Spears, has been our honor bringing you Remembering George Murray. We bring you back now to regular programming.